So today I wanted to discuss a somewhat bizarre type of planets that have mostly been discovered in the last 10 years. Planets that we refer to as USPs, ultra short period planets, like the one you see right here known as Kepler 78b, that are extremely unique because of their very short orbit around the star. By definition, their orbit has to be less than one day. Suggesting, of course, that all of these planets are extremely close to their parent star and are basically experiencing some of the most extreme effects a planet can experience. But surprisingly, in a lot of recent studies, scientists discovered that many of these planets are extremely similar and potentially have a very similar origin. Something we're going to discuss today and something that's possibly worth exploring because of the recent study that have just discovered another such planet. A planet explored in this study that as always you can find in the description below and a planet orbiting the star you see right here, Toy 6255. Approximately 65 light years away from us and a star that actually resembles our sun quite a lot. But what makes this discovery kind of exciting and somewhat unique is just the fact that this planet is surprisingly Earth-like in terms of its size and in terms of its mass. It's about 8% larger than Earth and approximately 40% more massive. But its orbit is about 5.7 hours. So basically a single year here is just under 6 hours long. And as a result of this, it obviously experiences a lot of extreme effects, including tidal disruption that most likely makes this planet appear this way. Not really a sphere, more like some kind of a melon. But I guess more importantly, based on recent calculations, in approximately 400 million years from today, this planet will most likely come close enough to the star to be completely destroyed. At first potentially forming some kind of a ring resulting from the tidal disruption and then eventually absorbed by the star. And well right now this is actually the best known progenitor to what the scientists refer to as a planet engulfment event. In other words, in the past few years, researchers have actually discovered various stars that seem to have been polluted by something on their surface. And that something was probably some kind of an ancient planet that basically got absorbed over time. And in every single case, those planets were terrestrial, but nobody actually knew what's going on and how they got there. And well, based on this particular study and these observations, we seem to have discovered at least one main progenitor. But the thing is, this is not the first time we've seen these planets, and quite a few of these USPs have been discovered as of 2024. But actually not that many, only a hundred have been established to be USPs. So essentially their orbit is just under one day. And interestingly enough, approximately half a percent of all of Sun-like stars, so essentially G-type stars, seem to possess these planets. But intriguingly, if you were to look at all G-type stars in the entire galaxy, approximately 10% of them seem to show signs of pollution from terrestrial planets. So in other words, up to 10% of all G-type stars potentially went through the same scenario. And so the obvious question is of course, well, what about the Sun? Has it also gone through this as well? At the moment we actually don't know, but it's quite possible because a lot of studies have actually predicted an additional planet that might have existed in the solar system and has now disappeared. You can learn more about this in some of the videos in the description. Nevertheless, in the last 5 to 6 years, based on studies of these planets, scientists have actually discovered quite a lot of interesting details. For example, today we know that they seem to be just as common as so-called hot Jupiters. Here we're talking about gas giants extremely close to a typical star that have also been discovered all over the place. But there seems to be one major difference. In every single case, the hot Jupiter systems do not seem to contain other planets, or at least don't seem to contain planets in a relative vicinity. But when it comes to these terrestrial USPs, in almost every case, they are members of compact multi-planet systems and do contain a lot of neighbors, which potentially suggests how they got here, through some kind of a gravitational influence from other planets, which basically pushed them closer and closer to the star. But then there is also another difference. For a very long time, it was actually believed that maybe these are actually related to hot Jupiters because they're basically a kind of a evaporated core that remains when hot Jupiters lose all of their gas. We actually refer to these as Ketonian planets and it's essentially just the hard core with all of the gas now removed. This could have been the result of the radiation from the star or possibly the gravitational interactions through what's known as the Roche lobe. But in this scenario there is actually something that's expected of these planets and of course the stars. Here the hot Jupiters and USP planets 
would have to have extremely similar characteristics, including metallicity. But surprisingly, the metallicity of a lot of stars that usually contain these USP planets seems to be much lower than stars containing hot Jupiters. And so in other words, they potentially have very different origins. And so in some of the older studies you can find in a description, scientists conducted statistical analysis to try to find some kind of a commonality and to potentially discover their true origin. And most surprisingly, pretty much all of them seem to be extremely similar to one another to the point where it doesn't actually make sense. First of all, they all seem to have Earth-like composition with about 70% rock, 30% iron, with just a few planets possibly standing out and containing either more or less density. For example, this planet, K2229b, seems to be a little bit more dense, possibly containing more iron, whereas the planet 55 Cancri IE seems to have lower density, possibly containing more rock or even some other gas and volatiles, but overall these planets seem to be more or less the same, potentially hinting on some kind of a similar origin. On top of this, there seems to be a direct link between the mass of the star and the most likely occurrence of these types of planets around those stars. So for example, a lot of M dwarfs or red dwarfs seem to have these types of planets, but not a lot of F dwarfs. And that once again potentially hints at what's going on here. And so right now a lot of researchers believe that these are possibly remnant cores after all, but not of hot Jupiters, but instead remnants of ice giants that possibly got too close to the star. And because a lot of these gas dwarfs would actually have very similar composition and very similar origins, they possibly go through the same scenario if they eventually get a little bit close to the parent star. And specifically, these are possibly remnants of so-called mini-Neptunes. Quite a variety of these planets have been discovered everywhere, these are actually some of the most common planets out there, with this graph right here essentially showing us how common they are. There is a major peak for planets of about 2 to 3 radii of Earth, and these types of planets would possibly serve as the main origin of these unusual terrestrial planets. And so in this scenario, the USP planets would essentially be unusual rocky cores of previously giant planets. And the only reason they exist is because these giant planets lost all of their gas. Because these would be ice giants, essentially containing things like methane, water and so on, by coming so close to the star, all of this gas would be evaporated very quickly. Or I guess that's the explanation we have for now. And because as I mentioned, one out of 200 sun-like stars seems to actually possess these planets, a lot of scientists right now would like to know if the sun used to have them as well. Although in this case, it would also be really interesting to one day discover a kind of a transitionary stage between this planet and the star absorbing the planet itself. So here we're talking about some kind of a ring system formed by the planet that was shredded apart. And though nothing like this has been actually seen yet, this is where the James Webb Space Telescope will possibly help us discover something in the next few years. And so assuming that these planets indeed come from previously much larger ice giants, it would basically suggest that this unusual planetary cannibalism is a lot more common than we ever thought. And it would also suggest that quite a lot of giant planets out there eventually evaporate, leaving nothing but the core instead, basically confirming the existence of these Ktonian planets, the type of planets you can learn about in one of the older videos in the description. But in this case, this new discovery, Toy 6255b, because of its proximity to the star, will most likely also help us understand various magnetic interactions between the planet and the star, while also helping us discover if it's indeed shaped like a melon and not a sphere. And so because a lot of these assumptions are still based on modeling and not actual observations, we still don't really know what's going on in this star system. It was only recently discovered by the TESS telescope, and so only time will tell what's actually happening here. But that means that we'll also come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. And so until then, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.